You're watching New Car Spin. This is the 2020 Lexus LS 500H all wheel drive. So, let's check the front out of this. Sorry for the wind. Zoom right up. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So basically this is the Ford luxury sedan that first was introduced in the U.S. in somewhere around 1989, 1990. And I know this because my dad had one. He leased one uh, back in January of 92. So I'm very familiar with the LS. Um, it used to look like, when it first came out, it used to look like a Mercedes-Benz. Now it looks like, in my opinion, the Porsche Panamera. And it gets a lot of compliments, and it is long. This is also the hybrid, which means it has a twin-turbo V6. Lexus no longer puts a V8 in their LS. You can still get one in their LC and the RCF. And you can notice the grill here is completely intricate and very detailed. And I think if I remember what... The guy Chad at the Lexus University told me was that this is called Omotenashi or Omonashi or something, and it means welcome mat. And it's pretty interesting. When you come up to the car, all you see is the grill. And it kind of is welcoming. Tri-beam headlights. And the funny part is when you open the front door, or actually, I should just say any door, the uh, suspension lifts up. And the car is also happy to see you. And, well, let's see if I didn't do this right. Let's try this one more time. I'm going to lock it. You hear the air suspension doing its thing. It's actually lowering. Okay. So you come up to the car. And it's happy to see you. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that or not, but the seatbelt buckle actually raised up. What I'm going to do, though, is show you a few other things. It's got a weird design. By the way, this is only the 24-hour time period with this car. I have it for a week, but I have to take it on a road trip today. So this will be a long, disorganized video, like always, but it's going to be very detailed. You get in the car, and you go, oh, yeah, this, this is... This is new. It smells exciting in here. It's like 2,500 miles on this car, and it's, it smells like a brand new Lexus should. But I'm like, where do I pull the door from? How do I close this door? And it's right here. There's actually a floating armrest on here. And it has soft close, but that's not as interesting as this feature right here and this hand-pleated door fabric. This is a fabric material and it's been hand pleated. Very detailed, and we'll explain that in a second. Let me turn it on. When you do that, the seat actually lowers down. There's a feature where you can have the seat raise up when you get out of the car. Ah, let me turn that down. Somehow, I got caught up in Pandora. Okay, I don't want to get flagged by YouTube for using music. Anyway, uh, we have our drive modes up here. We can select custom or comfort and eco and and you'll see it there on the screen and you can configure custom and then there's a sport and a sport plus and i'll show you that as i drive along on my road trip and the best part is actually down here this is like another command center and it's just like all the other lexus vehicles but we have additional buttons down here that seat button is for all the seats look at all those adjustments you can make and based on that you can actually do a change to the lumbar and the bolsters, and you can do things that you can't do with the regular controls on the seat. I can even adjust the headrest height and position forward and back. So if I wanted to, I'll just show you here. I'll just go like this. Hopefully you got that, and I'll put it forward again. And I can put it up, and I can put it down. So that's pretty cool. I can do all sorts of adjustments, and I can actually do it to the passenger seat as well. And driver seat refresh allows me to do different massage functions, so I can put on 
centripetal massage and it actually massages the bottom of the seat as well which is really cool and you can adjust the intensity there uh obviously in the lexus most lexus vehicles the hardest part is actually getting the uh heated seats to come on but they're actually automatic and they're memory set so if you had them on before they'll be on again the steering wheel as you could tell is on auto so it'll be auto heat and I'm assuming if you left the ventilation on it would be on too but you cannot run both heating and cooling at the same time like you could in some German vehicles so let's put that on too now I've also got the Mark Levinson sound system in here and it's great, but it's not my thing. I, I don't feel it. And this car is so isolated, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to feel everything. We've got the radar cruise. We have our instrumentation here. And that instrumentation includes all the different features of the menu and going through and, and seeing uh, messages and settings. And there's a heads-up display, which I cannot see with my polarized shades on. If I put them here for you, you notice the can't see anything plus the speed is to the right over here and it's not centered if you're sitting in the seat it's not centered to the speedometer so it's it's a little weird and if you sit at an angle uh or if you're not perfectly centered in your seat uh, you're not going to see all of the uh, heads up so this is the front of the vehicle massage seats pleated doors let me show you the price the price is actually you know what the price is in the back seat, so rather than show you the price here, we'll go in the back and do it. So what happens is I'll leave the vehicle on. It's in park. You can see here it's in park. And the parking brake is on. It's auto, so that button right there allows the car to put it itself in uh, parking brake mode. It's all automatic. It's very complicated in here. The engine's actually not running, so it's a little weird to just open the door and get out. But trust me, it's all good. Of course, when the car is on, the steering wheel won't move and the seats won't move. Nothing's, nothing's in the position where you would normally exit. But you'll see that later. Okay. <clears throat> we have our uh, sunshades on the window switches for the rear. So there's power rear sunshades. And I'll show you the back. So the seat actually moves to a entry exit position. We have an airbag back here in the seat. And soft close. Okay. So this is a uh, very nice interior. The vehicle is on. I've got some speakers here in the ceiling. Those are part of the Mark Levinson reference system. I have, hello, a mirror. For myself, I have a leather wrapped grab handle with soft return. Sorry if you couldn't see that. And back here I have cup holders. And you might go, well, what's that shiny thing in the middle? Well, it's not the cup holder, it's not a cover. Obviously I do have, uh, where is it? The button's right here. I do have storage down here and USB ports. Um, subwoofer, I believe. But you'll notice it's very luxurious back here, especially when I hit that button. That button allows me to control things like the sunshades. Of course, I wouldn't want them lowered in this car. I'm a VIP, so let's go ahead and put them back up. It even, it even has a shade back there. That's beautiful, because the uh, pet peeve I had about the Audis was that they had those little quarter windows... And the sh they never had shades in the A8. But look at that. That is spectacular. The details are all about the details. That doesn't make sense, but that's what I mean. Okay. <clears throat> we can control the shades. We can control our lights. We have lights up here. I don't know if we can change the way they um, aim, but that's still brilliant nonetheless. We have our controls for settings, so we can change the screen settings, but you can't pull this out like you could in the 7 Series, and that's okay. 
Because apparently, 44% of all 7 Series BMWs are sold in China. So this is what we get in the U.S. from Japan. Now the seat, this is interesting. We have passenger left and right. And then we have all these different settings, and this looks very confusing. It looks like something out of Delta One. And well, it pretty much is, because all you have to do is hit passenger and hit that button. And yep. As long as the car's on and the front door is closed, <laughs> you can extend that front seat all the way to the front, and it obviously disables the airbag. And no one can sit up there. But now, look at this. I'm five foot ten and maybe sometimes six feet, and my feet can't even touch the front. So look at that. <laughs> now, something else I can do is go to right. <clears throat> and I can set that to the full recline mode. And I just touch it. I don't have to hold it down or anything. And the seat goes into a recline mode. Now, what I can do is touch here and bring that up. Look at that. My leg rest. Now, of course, when the seat moves forward... It, it allows you to lean back, but, I mean, they have little dimples here, and, yeah, I'm relaxed. Totally relaxed, but I can take this a step further. I can also, if I go back this way, I can turn on the heated seat. Let's turn that on high. And something else. Where is it? Climate. No, that's not it. Where are we? Relaxation. There it is. Now I can be fully relaxed. So your left passenger and your right passenger in the rear have, oh, I don't know, let's go for full body stretch. And now I get a full on massage on the bottom cushion and on the back. And I have heated seats going and it's on level five. So you can change the level here. You can turn it off. You can do lumbar, lower body, upper body. You can go crazy here. So... <clears throat> this is great. The only downside here is Lexus let me borrow this car so I can go to the Houston Auto Show. And I have no one to drive it. So I'd love to just go to the Houston Auto Show in Houston and let someone else drive it from Dallas with me in the back. But no one else is allowed to drive the car. Press cars are only allowed to be driven by the people they're given to. So... I guess I have to do all the driving, which is, you know, not that bad. And if you uh, if you wanted to come along for a ride, I guess you could just imagine yourself back here. This is not a bad place to be. I like the black. It's suede-ish. Suede, Alcantara, Dynamica. I don't know what this headliner is, but it's obviously very nice. And you could get a full-on panoramic roof where you have a... Uh, a power shade and glass over there and then a power shade and glass back here. I don't think it opens up in the back like it would in the old school A8, but here we are. <clears throat> I have adjustable headrests. They're not exactly pillow soft, but they are comfortable. So let's talk about price and then I'll get talking about the driving. Here we go. So it's a 2020, let's focus, there we go, a 2020 Atomic Silver, and it's made in Japan. The fuel economy I should be getting, and we're going to try for it today, is 23 City, 31 Highway. And I can say that with confidence, 35 Highway. I think we're going to try and get 35 today. Uh, no V8 in this car anymore, so the LS now just has a, uh, let's see if I can focus again, this print is very bad. Uh, we've got the RV6 with electronic uh, hybrid system. It's not a plug-in, and it has a CVT and an automatic, and it has all the safety features you'd expect in a car that costs this much. I'll tell you in a second. So we have some options here. One of them includes a Toyota Corolla, because that is a $21,000 option. Sorry, that's $23,000, I think. I can't really read that print. Is that a three or a one? What do you... <laughs> hmm. <laughs> 23, possibly? That is called the Executive Package with Creco 
Kiriko glass. So we have the, the semi aniline leather. We have the quilted perforated uh, doors, the hand, the hand pleated doors, which is basically the clue. So when you see someone uh, pull up an Alexis and they open the door and you see that pleading on the doors, you know that, and that glass as well, you know that it's the executive package. I think also the telltale sign on the outside is that special grill I showed you earlier. So let's see here. Um, I have to use my nose to tap on the glass here to focus, which is really annoying. Well, it won't focus anymore. Let's try it again. Uh, okay. So we don't have uh, screens back here, but we have multifunction massage, heated rear seats, power reclining, ya ya ya. Uh, rear seat knee airbags. Huh. Didn't know that was a thing. We have the Mark Levinson stereo, which is nineteen hundred forty bucks. The panoramic view monitor, which uh, you know includes the safety aspect to it. And if we go up here on the list, the twenty-inch wheels and the twenty-four-inch head-up display, and uh, the Lexus safety system. So there we go. We're all in uh, at a base price of eighty-three thousand one hundred eighty. But when we're done with adding a Corolla to the car, we're at one hundred eighteen thousand eight hundred. $95? I cannot read that. It's too blurry. Anyway, you get the gist. Um, <clears throat> well, that's the vehicle. Let's see if I can slide that in there. Okay. Nice filing cabinet. <laughs> All right, so you could worry yourself about putting everything into normal mode and whatever, and then getting out of the car. Or you could just pull on the door handle. And what happens is the seat goes back down to its normal position and then you can see it sits upright again and it lowers just a little bit there we go so now we are we are in the entry exit position and you cannot disable that in the back seat but um, the last thing I want to show you is we do have audio controls so you can turn the power on or off you could change your source change the volume change the sound it's it's pretty basic. It's not as advanced. Like you can't change the, um, the 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 tone, right? So you can't change like the 3D sound setting that we have in here. You can't add uh, bass or treble to it. You just have to deal with it the way it is. But still, I mean, this is amazing. And this the Mark Levinson stereo is indicated by this speaker grill. That is a speaker grill, which is funky. We have our vents here. Forgot to show you that. We have our vents in the center. We have nice polished wood down here. And this armrest actually goes away and you can have a full bench seat here. So you could fit a third person back here in a pinch. Although, pff, why? I don't think a third person wants to sit in the middle. <laughs> All right, so. <clears throat> Show you the trunk. It's obviously powered, but I can't figure out a way to open or close it from inside. That is the depth of the trunk. My bag is basically at the end, so it's not that deep. Uh, you could probably fit only one or maybe two bodies in here if you dismember them, but still, it's not that bad. And I think this is, uh, yeah, access. That's not like umbrella storage or anything, but you know, you've got your uh, cargo net and a first aid kit, and of course power closing. You'll notice too is the glass is flush all the way down the car. That's very, very German-like. It cuts down on the wind noise and it also makes the car a lot sleeker in the air. Look at that. That is awesome. Okay, here we go. I actually like the setting of the car being able to uh, change the seat for in and out. It makes it a lot easier and then it makes it much better to have a cozier perfection kind of driving uh, setup. So let's close this door and move that seat back to where it was. To that we go here 
And then we just go to passenger seat adjustment, I think, or no, maybe it's driver's seat. Nope, we go to this option here. There we go. <clears throat> so we can return the rear seat back and we could also return the front passenger seat. So you just press that, let it go do its thing. You can see how the headrest folds forward and then folds back. And then the seat just continues its travel. There we go. So it's done. And of course in the back seat, uh, there's plenty of room and it looks really good. Man, oh man, oh man. So this is gonna be one hell of a road trip and I'm gonna start it right now. Car's on, but I do want to uh, stop the camera for one second and start it one more time. I wanna take my jacket off, so I'll be right back. Okay, it's only sensible to assume that in a car like this, we need to do some pre-flight. Uh, and because I've only had this car for 24 hours, I haven't gone through all the settings, but uh, we've got blind spot monitoring on. We've got all systems on, curve speed reduction. Okay, we'll put that on low. I guess that means when you have the auto cruise on, it will slow down for corners like the Mercedes does. So... Lane change assist. Ooh, that's, that'll be a good one. That means we can hit the blinker and the car will change lanes on its own, I'm hoping. Uh, lane change. Okay, so the lane sensing is interesting. I've got that feature on, and I noticed how big this car is. It's really wide from, not even from the mirrors, but just from the pillar to that pillar over there. Like, I can't even reach, well, I can't even reach the other side of that headrest. That's how wide this car is. So... When you had the lane keeping thing on, which is this button here, it's constantly beeping on me because this car is wide. I, uh, it's always warning me before I get out towards the edge of the lane. What else do we got? What else do we have? Hub brightness, blah, 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 parking. It seems like everything's on. So let's go ahead and look at some other stuff here. Okay, the radar cruises off and that's off. I'll turn that back on. There we go. And you can see the arrows in the heads-up display, too. Mazda does that in their new CX-5, which is really nice. There's our uh, music from Pandora, which is playing through Bluetooth streaming audio on my phone. Okay, we've got tire pressures that look dead on. And that was a cool animation. Okay. So let's go to the display there. That's the driver aid display that's a, a good standard mode and we're going to go into press this in for normal and then as far as the map what we're going to do in our pre-flight is yes i am here in dallas and now we are going to what are we going to do we are going to enter our destination before you start consider viewing the available video Get directions to Hotel Zaza, Houston, Texas. Select the one you want. Say next page for more items. One. Nah, frickin' A. I want to go back. I want to. I want the Houston Museum District. Please try again. Two. To navigate to this point of interest, say go there. Go there. See that starting guidance for see, a new route. See that roundabout thing? I did a video on that on why Americans can't use a roundabout. That video has got like 40,000 views and it's been watched worldwide. Okay, there's our trip. We're on quick setting. We've got a 252 mile, 255 mile to destination, three hours and 56 minutes, and we're going to go for it. So let's go to use this trackpad here and move it over to OK and then press OK. Please proceed to the highlighted route, then the route guidance will start. All right, so here we go. Foot on the brake, left and down for drive. Huh. When I did that, the uh, seats automatically reclined. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. So they were in uh, ingress-egress mode to get in and out, but then once you put it in drive, they get into ride mode. 
which is awesome. And I have not read the manual. It is massive. It's a thick manual. It's typical Lexus E Toyota E. Let's see if I can open this glove box. There we go. It's right in there. There's not much space other than for the manual because it's massive and takes up all the space. And there is a CD slot, in case you're wondering. It's right here. So you still can go old school with your tunes. Or audio file with your tunes. Uh, this is just to show you the depth of this because it's all dark in here. We have a tray that slides and it's nice and flocked and this opens obviously left and right for driver and passenger or pilot and co-pilot. And we have a charging, uh, what is this called, a uh, 12 volt receptacle here, our audio in, and then we have USB ports here, and then we also have another 12 volt here, and it's covered which is great because if you spill a drink, you're not going to get it into your into your uh, outlet. So that's cool. All right, we're in drive. We're going to set auto brake hold, which means it's going to hold the the uh, brakes at the red lights, and you can see the hold indicator there. And when you look at the gauges, you'll also see very simple here. It's very simple. I like that. So. We will creep forward. Foot off the brake, it doesn't move because we put it on hold. So we just put our foot on the accelerator and off we go. And the engine's off because it's a hybrid. So that adds to the luxury aspect of this vehicle. You can see in the eco gauge here that we're still in electric mode. And then power, when it gets to that white band there, that's when the engine kicks in. So we'll go right. One thing I want to talk about now is the suspension. Right turn at the end of the road, and then left turn at the end of the road. This is the best suspension in any modern vehicle. The air suspension in here does a really good job at isolating me from these speed bumps. I actually uh, forget I've gone over them. <laughs> it's like, oh, there was a speed bump back there? I didn't even notice. And also, you can tell when you go over these speed bumps that this is a long car, because it's like, all right, speed bump, now? And then now. So there's a delay between getting over these bumps. Let that person go. And one thing I also want to talk about are these seats. I think Volvo has the best seats in the business. But look at all the adjustments you have here. I can even adjust, which I'm going to do right now, is the depth of the seat cushion. I can actually raise it on my coccyx, which is a technical medical term. I can lower and uh, raise the side bolsters or the, the, on the seat cushion bottom. It's a little bit of an air uh, plenum. And then I have lumbar support. And I also have massage. So let's go back to driver's seat refresh. Let's kick in some uh, upper body massage. We'll keep that on intense. So let's go. Oh, the engine kicked in. So, left turn at the end of the road, and then left turn at the end of the road. As this is not a plug-in hybrid, you don't have like a preconditioned app where you can do stuff while it's connected to the charge station. But you also do not have to go to a charge station. So it's not uh, a charging required kind of setup. And the engine does shut off when you come to a stop, but you don't notice it. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go. Proceed about two miles to US seventy five South. Okay. Very luxurious in here. This air suspension is the best of any modern car right now. And obviously the cabin is very quiet, very solid. You can hear the thick glass and you you basically just waft right along in almost pure silence. So this car might be good for those considering a Tesla or a Panamera. Uh, I know you cannot get a 7 Series or an S-Class plug-in hybrid because they don't offer it here yet or anymore. Either way, you can't get one yet. 
So this is a, a pretty good option or alternative for someone looking for a luxury vehicle that that is, I would say, fuel efficient and performs. We're going to find out 0 to 60 when we get on the freeway, and we're also going to find out uh, just overall the comfort. I think you can tell I'm not disappointed in this vehicle. I got in it yesterday, and I was like, holy smokes, this thing is just awesome. It just drives like... It drives like a missile. It's not quick like a missile, but it just, it's guided. There's something about this thing that just, it's like those planes that can only fly when they're on, when their computers are on because they're so unstable. That's what this thing feels like. It feels so guided that a lot of stuff is happening, but it's also, it's also uh, restricting a lot of things so that you don't notice a lot of things are happening. So I've got my shades up. That's what it looks like in the back. Through the mirror, you can still see out. And you can obviously still see out uh, from the back. This is a cloudy day as well. And yeah, that crystal, by the way, does not light up at night. It just looks good during the day. And because this interior is black, you don't really see all the interior lighting at night either, especially in the city. But that does light up. That little gallery area there does light up, just like in the LC500H. So, yeah. I will get on that freeway. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. Seven miles ahead on the route. Stop and go traffic. Ooh, we've been brilliant. Uh, So what we're going to do is we're going to use the the auto cruise mode, which is what I'm calling it. But it will do a, a feature where it will follow the car in front. But before I do any of that, let me let me quickly reset the uh, trip computer information. So let's just go to... There we go. Hold that down. Okay, now our reset. And now we're going to see on our 253-mile th- journey what kind of fuel economy we're going to get. I'm hoping that we actually get... 35, but you never know, but we'll give it a shot. Right now, we're just cruising along in normal mode, and if I want to, I'll put it on eco. We'll, we'll play with those features. I'll play with them, and we'll get to see what works, what doesn't work, and eventually we'll do Sport Plus, which obviously, that will that will totally eat away fuel economy. In half of a mile, keep left but, onto US 75 South. Tell me, though, would you really buy this car for the fuel economy? Mm, no. I think you'd buy this car because it doesn't make sense to have a V8 sitting there idling in stop-and-go traffic or just at a red light. Like, it's great if it shuts down and it's powered by batteries. What is going on up here? Everyone's braking. Typical Lexus driver just slowing everybody down. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> Which begs the question. US 75 South. Is this Lexus actually fast enough? From my first impression here in the city is there's not enough... US 75 South. There's not enough uh, electricity. There's not enough electric power. Or the motors just are a little on the weak side to be able to accelerate in normal traffic normally under electric load. Because I seem to always get to like this point where I'm, I'm getting the engine to kick in. So you're, you're, what you're doing is you're going from a perspective of, oh, I can, I can drive this car just like any other car and save a lot on fuel, but you can't. Alright, go over. Let's actually put it in Sport Plus now and just get this over with. Sport Plus. Let this truck go by. Gives me something to pass. how it's a CVT. You can hear how it pipes in some sound on Sport Plus mode. Sounds a lot like the LC500H that I drove. And it's not bad, but this obviously feels slower than the coupe because it's a lot heavier in here. But being a hybrid, we do have batteries to lug around. So 
you're not going to get like all out performance like you'd expect, but there is an F sport version of the LS if you're so inclined for more speed, I guess. All right, let's go back into comfort mode. Oh man, I had Chinese food for lunch and I am dying. <laughs> so spicy. All right, what I'll do is I'll get on the uh, 45 or the whatever takes me down to Houston, and, and once I get past downtown, I'll reconnect with you. Okay, I got radar cruise on, and it's actually trying to steer itself, but this is a perfect time to have it on because we're now entering stop and go traffic. So we're just going to see how this thing drives. I don't have my feet on the pedals, I'm not touching the steering wheel. We got traffic coming to a halt. And I find myself fighting with the steering wheel a lot. It seems to also have a hard time keeping the car centered. And I'm not sure why. But you can actually follow the car in front at this point. Uh, it wants me to put my hands on the wheel. So I'll just touch it a little bit. I don't think it's capacitive where you just knows your hands are on the wheel. I think it's you have to actually have some resistance on the wheel. We'll find out actually. Alright, so I won't adjust any steering. My hands are off the wheel. Let's just go along here. If I touch the steering wheel, will it? Yep, it is capacitive. Good, good to know. So I'll just put my finger right here. No? You can see there in the heads up, it's steering and doing all sorts of stuff. Uh, it's got my speed, it's got my distance I've got set. I can change the distance here with this button. I'll do that. Go down to one. See how it turns through this turn. Yeah, it seems to be centering in the lane just fine. It likes, it really wants me to have my hands on the wheel a lot. So I will let it do the steering. I'll just keep touching the wheel. I'm not going to hold it. As long as my fingers are on it, it seems to be happy with that. But it's doing all the steering and it's doing all the accelerating and decelerating. Whoa, it's a little crazy though. It likes to get... I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it likes to actually hug, hug the corner a little bit. But this is the beauty of auto uh, stop and go. When you're in stop and go traffic like this, something that the Toyota 4Runner couldn't do was come to a complete stop on its own. How this drives in traffic is also important, which is why I'm showing you. It seems to stop a little short. It's going on its own. Oh, that's pretty heartbreaking. So it's not exactly the most luxurious. It says operate cruise switch or accelerate pedal. So I'm going to press the gas pedal. We're going to go a little bit. Let me put it in comfort mode and see if that changes the way the car drives. I'd like to think this is scientific, but it's obviously not scientific. This is just daily. So I'm trying to give you the real world experience here and not give you any fluff. So if you appreciate this, like, subscribe, share with your friends, hit the bell, do all that good stuff. Because that allows me to get more really nice cars like this to give you uh, uh, the, the information you're wanting or needing. Whether it's today or 10 years from now. I hope this helps. Pretty good. Um, so let's go over the sound system while we're in this kind of traffic. If I go down to menu, you'll see we have our little icons there. I can go to audio and then up. Uh, actually, I can select audio. Then go to the left here and click sound. And now I can adjust the treble mid bass. I always keep everything flat. And then we have automatic sound leveler, which is on. And then we have, it wants me to touch the steering wheel. All right. Then we have surround. And under surround, I have 2D, 3D, and off. So I can put it in 3D. If you do this while the music's playing, it'll actually play a little gap. So the, the music isn't seamless when it does that change. So just know that you're going to interrupt the song. In two miles, I-45, south. 
is on the left. Okay. We'll go back to menu. Actually, we'll go to map. Just press map here at any time, and you get to see your map there. And we can change the perspective. Two miles, I-45 South is on the left. So let me just resume uh, showing you the rest of the vehicle. I do not get so far. I mean, we do get uh, navigation instructions on the left here, but I don't get any in the center. Even if I scroll through, I am holding the wheel. Uh, the navigation on that side. Let's see if I go down. Yeah, there we go. So now we have redundant or tridundant. <laughs> That's a new word. Tridundant navigation information. And I don't know if it will change lanes on its own without me signaling. So we're going to come up to that point. Obviously, there's too much traffic here to try and change lanes on its own. So let's see what else I can show you in this brief gap. Oh, I love this. The air conditioning. The way this is like a wheel, a mouse wheel. Look at that. How it updates the temperature. That is very luxurious. It's it's unnecessary, but it's very nice. The way that feels, it feels just like a mouse wheel, but a nice big heavy metal one. And the, the detents on it are really smooth and, and uh, also strong at the same time. And then, look at the way the animation is on that. That's nice. All right. What else? What else? What else? You see it says EV in there. That's because there's this mode down here called EV mode. And it doesn't allow me to be in EV mode because it's not available. It doesn't say why. It just says it's not available. Let's hit it again. Nope. I don't know. There are some aspects of this car that are kind of like outdated Prius-like and they might be eclipsed by future models by other auto manufacturers because they're doing uh, plug-in hybrid systems that aren't based on what the Prius used to be. And so it's, I don't know, it's a gamble, I think, to, to go with a non-plug-in hybrid like this. Because I think you're not future-proofing yourself from things like... Uh, fast lane access or parking, uh, you know, like pr parking in a, just parking, like let's just say in a, on a premium floor in a parking garage or something that may be just for EV only. You couldn't do that in this car, even though it is a hybrid, it's not plug-in and plug-ins would probably get priority access in the future in certain states or cities. So keep that in mind. This is, there's nothing wrong with this car. The ride is sensational and it's nice and quiet. And it's doing a good job doing all this on its own. Well, that's the music for you. I just hit the volume button on the steering wheel. Pandora is doing its thing. All right, so the right lane seems to be open. I've got my blinker on, but it's not changing lanes on its own. So I'm not sure what that's about, but we'll move over. say there's someone in my blind spot now these people are driving like they belong in Houston Jesus there's Dallas for you okay I can't seem to get the auto lane change working if that even is a feature I'm not really sure well, let's continue on to Houston. Also, as I'm driving along, let's let's cancel the radar here. Okay, and if you encroach on the line, it's going to beep at you. Oh, only if you have this enabled. There we go. So let's see how it likes me cornering here. So if I get near the lane, it Continue beeps. 
Sound. It's not really trying to steer me away from the line, though. Even if I... Oh, it is now. I'm not even touching the wheel. So it will steer at the last minute, but not in advance. And that's when this button is activated. If this button's deactivated, it, it does nothing. So you can just wander off if you're off the road, if you're not paying attention. So let's activate that again. So now let's... Uh, Oh, this is kind of fast and not ideal to test out. This thing does just scoot along, though, and it's really silent. There is no indication of any wind cutting over this car. I mean, there's nothing coming out of these windows. There's nothing coming from the A-pillar, and I actually don't even feel buffeting when I pass trucks. So you normally when you go by a truck you kind of feel like being pushed around. Not in this one. It's like a knife. Obviously a little noisy when we go over those little road nipples. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call them. I don't know which lane to be in. Is this what lane is this? Do I have to be over one? What is this? Nope. Now it's moving this way. Huh. Okay. At some point, I'll give you an update on how we are with fuel economy. We're in comfort mode. I think what now I'll do is put it into normal. And I will go to... Oh, no, that was sport. Sorry. There we go. That's normal. And I'll move over to averaging 23.1. So here we go. I don't know what we started with on the odometer. Probably 227.35, maybe. And, uh, let's see if it reset on the uh, trip. reset the average speed there. Hopefully that didn't reset the fuel economy. Nope. Good. Okay. And then the odometer. I don't know where to reset the trip odometer because there's no button for it over here. There's nothing that I can see. Oh, there we go. Odeo and trip. So trip A. Let's reset that. Boom. All right. We are on our way to Houston. And I'm pretty sure we can do this on a half tank. Three hours and 36 minutes to go. 239 miles. 23.4 average. Let's do this. All right, I'm flying through here. Well, not necessarily going that fast. I'm only doing 88 miles an hour. But, hold on, my gimbal's all weird. Oh, let's try that again. Click. There we go. All right. 85 miles an hour. We're going through traffic here. And what I've decided to do, though, was turn off that steering thing, the LKA or LDA or whatever it is. So right here, I turn that off. And now I feel like I'm having a much more smooth ride. I'm not bouncing back and forth like a bowling ball in the, uh, in the lane, like, you know, when you have the bumpers on. That's kind of what it felt like. It felt like lane bumpers at a bowling alley. It's just dink, 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 dink as I go down. So that's off. And now we're just going straight as an arrow, cutting right through. And yeah, normal mode. It coasts just nicely. What I find is that when I, when I want to lift off, it gets into regen mode automatically. And I can't turn off the regen mode. There doesn't seem to be a way to modify that. And weirdly enough, we do have paddles, and I don't know why. This isn't really a sports sedan, but it is a highway bomber. I mean, this thing with the air suspension and those back seats, 
and these this air conditioning system and these massage seats. This thing is the way to go, and I'm really thankful that Lexus let me borrow one for the week. So thank you, Lexus. Now, what I do have to say about these seats is they have many, 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 many adjustments and lots of features, and they they do the job. But something is interesting about this. You know, Lexus is owned by Toyota. It's Japanese, and these, these, these are nice luxury cars. But if you've never sat in the Volvo S90, which is Swedish but owned by Geely, what are you looking at over there? Anyway, if you've, if you've never been in an S90, those seats are spectacular. And of course, Geely, which is Chinese, also Asian money now, owns Volvo. And they don't have all these fancy adjustments or anything. They just have really nice coddling seats. And that's the difference car with nice seats, you get in it, and you feel like you're wearing the car. It feels like a suit, and it looks good, and it feels right, and that has something to do with your confidence level. But in this car, it looks good, the seats are doing everything I would feel like I need at the moment, but I feel like I'm sitting on top of the car. I don't feel like I'm sitting in the car. I feel like I'm riding the car. And you can see, but my, my shoulders are, compared to new cars these days, I mean, this door is low. My shoulders are kind of above the sill, which is different. And my shoulders are also above the dash. So the dash feels really low, kind of Audi-like. And on a road trip, it, it feels like uh, like I'm not really in, inside something. I, I don't feel like I'm riding in the car. I feel like I'm like I'm just sort of sitting on seats and we're going down the road. There we go, change my lanes. I gotta keep a lookout for the for the uh, highway patrol here because it's, I just feel like it's happening here. I feel like there's something coming up as far as a oh, speed trap or whatever. And it's hard to tell how fast I'm going in here just by looking or listening because this does not feel like 79 miles an hour. And if I want it to go fast, I could. I could do it in the normal mode that I'm in now. We're doing 24 miles per gallon, which is okay for a luxury sedan. In a V8 sedan, you couldn't really push this, so this would be a lot of work. In a Mercedes V6, uh, 25 would be about as much as you can get in a V8, but a V6 could do about 27, 28. So we're in a V6 here, but all this lead battery weight or whatever it is, whatever kind of battery it is, there's still some weight from these batteries in this hybrid drive. Let's kick it up a little bit. Let's, let's go to sport mode. All right. Let's see what it's like in trips. Not bad. Yeah, you know I had to tease you like that. <laughs> so, very capable at high speed. It doesn't feel any different at 100 than it does at 40. That's all down to this air suspension. Very magical. Magical? No, very technical. How about that? How about them apples? Okay, well, I got a long ways to go and very short battery life on my phone, so I might have to swing into a rest stop, pull my charger out of the bag in the trunk, get the phone juiced up a little bit more, and at, at least we don't have to stop by and, and uh, charge the car like we would if it was a Tesla. I don't even know if you can drive your Tesla on a half battery from Dallas to Houston. I don't think that's even possible. Whoa. Yeah, look at that. It goes right into regen mode and just slows down. Let me turn off the route cruise. How about that? I think radar cruise is breaking. There's no real indication that the radar cruise is on. Some cars have a real speedometer. This just has a tachometer. No matter what mode you're in, it's a tachometer. So the, the speed is just a number readout, but you don't see cruise control is set. Let's try this again. I'm going to hit set. And it says 83 there. 
if I get out of that screen. Okay, so tell me where it says cruise is on. What says that tiny little green icon down there? How are you supposed to know? That that's something that they need to improve on. Actually, like especially in a road trip vehicle, because I could I could just go about my two hour journey here and not remembering I left it on and going why is it breaking? Hmm. All right, rest stop time. Going to grab my battery charger and hit the road again. Right now we're averaging 24.4 mpgs. And we're going to get off the freeway right here. This is a weird rest area. It's an exit with an exit. Keep. Proceed about six tenths of a mile to I-45 South. All right. 24.5. So it's actually... Well, we can probably come to a stop here with the way this regenerative braking is. Pretty smooth. Right here. And yeah, we'll hit the brakes. There's no camera button here either, so I can't just show you this uh, panoramic or surround camera view. I don't even know how to do it, so I'll we'll put it in park. Apparently it's parked. And uh, when you turn the car off, wheel retreats, the seat actually lifts up. And now I can get out. And when I do that, you'll see, hopefully, the car lifts up on the driver's side just a little bit to make it easier to get in and out, which is nice. So those of you who think you need a SUV so it's easy to get in and out, just get a vehicle with an air suspension. That'll help a lot. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm back. All right, I got the thing plugged in. And you'll notice here there's a, there's a uh, channel, and that allows you to have the phone plugged in to the USB and then you can close the lid. Now let's talk about tech. If I go to menu, uh, we'll go to projection and from projection it'll say connect a compatible device. Whoops, I don't want to do that. Let's go back to menu. This is where people hate this uh, system here. Projection. What does it say? Yeah, with via USB. Okay, so I do have an Android phone, but it doesn't connect via Android Auto. If I go back to menu, let's go to phone. Okay, there's some phone numbers in there, and then, yeah, I think that's not it. Menu, apps. Oh, you know what? I don't have Android Auto on my phone. That's what it is. So, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Sorry to waste your time about that. But I got the phone plugged in, and we're at 24.5 MPGs. I'm actually in normal mode. Let's go back down into uh, eco, see if we can eke anything out of here. I said 35 MPGs. The sticker said 28 on the highway. We're not even there yet. And we know I did bring up the speed a little bit, but I just don't uh, don't see that happening today. Let's go into here as well and turn off the vented seat that I had on. So it remembers where you were last time. I'm going to actually turn on the heat one level. There we go. Go back to menu, and then map, actually. All right, two hours and 40 minutes to go, 174 miles. I'm taking my time here because this is a nice car, and why rush this? I only get this opportunity once in a while, and I'm sure if you were given a $119,000 car, you'd take your sweet-ass time, too. So, unfortunately, though, I don't have anyone with me. I would bring people, but on this particular trip, I can only go to a press event. So I can't bring guests to the press event. I can try, but no one's really asked. There we go. Got my sunglasses in the sunglasses compartment. We also have capacitive lights, reading lights. And I noticed when I went for the, uh, the sunroof controls, I accidentally grazed this. See, so... That may be an annoyance or a cool feature. I don't know. Got our sunroof here with the manual shade, but it's too bright out. I'm gonna keep it like this and get my seatbelt on. Let's 
which is hard because I'm going to go like, how do I do this? Switch hands. When you get in the car, you know, the, the buckle here goes up, but when you put your seatbelt in, it retreats. So it kind of pulls the seatbelt in and pulls it snug for you automatically. All right, vehicle's on, even though I hear nothing. Let's go into reverse. And now you'll see the backup camera. Now if I use this touchpad, I can go... Uh, it's going to show me oncoming traffic, which is correct. There we go. I'm going to select this icon. And now I can get like a wide view, really nasty fisheye view, or I can go to a narrow view, and I can show lines or no lines which helps with the parking I guess. I don't see a parking a self parking feature in here either. I don't know if they still do self parking. Remember from the Top Gear episode long long time ago that they tried it and they hit like a fence with it. <laughs> All right. Drive. And off we go. That yeah, eco mode really retards the Proceed acceleration. About four tenths of a mile to I forty five south. By the way, that whole phrase "Don't mess with Texas" really comes into play here at the rest stops. Uh, they're very clean. People here are very civilized. These rest stops are not as scary as other states. In a quarter of a mile, keep left onto I forty five south. So, Alabama's got some cool ones, too. They have, like, picnic areas. You can go camping. Kind of cool. All right, let's get on the freeway. Florida in eco mode. Oh, that mirror is way over there, too. Keep left onto I-45 South. 24.3 MPGs. <laughs> so, it definitely sucks down fuel when you want it to. But it doesn't feel as peppy as you'd expect, especially in eco mode. And sport, sport mode, nor, sport plus mode, normal mode, all that. Um, we'll try it on the way home. But on the way to, let's just see if we can do some fuel economy run here of some sort. 24 MPGs. You know, Infinity does like a haptic gas pedal, where in eco mode it kind of pushes back on the gas pedal to keep you from burying your foot in it. It also does it as part of the, uh, uh, you know, the warning for approaching vehicles too quickly. It'll push back on the gas pedal. The Lexus doesn't do that, but this one feels like even in eco mode, there's just so much, um, what do I say? There's so much lag at the first few inches of travel in this gas pedal that you feel like there is some sort of haptic, but there isn't. I don't feel it. I don't feel it at all. All right. We got cruise on. We're going to set it here. And then we're doing 79. I'll kick it up to 80. We got our lane thing on, eco mode. All right. I want to turn off the camera, crank the tunes, and give you an update when I feel like it. <laughs> the uh, Pandora shit was going and it cut out and I realized there's no cell phone reception so I went into the uh, in the middle of a song and just cut it off and went to the offline mode now you tell me where in here does it show the status of my cell phone reception when I'm connected via bluetooth I don't see it do you see it I don't which is kind of like uh, where they need to update this system because I think that that information on even on a Uconnect system on a Dodge and a Chrysler and a Ram truck and uh, even the Maserati that I drove those vehicles show me all the statuses of everything on the car rather than one screen at a time with no information it's almost like I'm getting information overload and no information at the same time I think Lexus can improve their their system here. I don't want to call it infotainment. I just want to call it telematics. They can improve that if they were to incorporate more information and icons so I know, like, oh, there's no reception, rather than having to pick up my phone and look at it to see what the heck was going on. A lot of uh, Suburbans on trucks here. The San and 
not, not San Antonio, Arlington, is, I think is where those Chevy Tahoes and Suburbans are made. And I'm actually going to see the uh, launch or the reveal of the new Tahoe tonight. And that's why I'm driving down to San Antonio, I mean, sorry, uh, Houston, because that reveal is happening along with the Ford Mach-E and the Hyundai venue. So we're going to go check that out. You and I are going to go down there and look at that. I'll post the videos and we'll see them on my channel. So that's the whole purpose of this trip, to go to the Houston Auto Show and check out those reveals. And yeah, along the way I'm going to give you a report here on this Lexus. Not a review, but a report. Great suspension in here. I got to say, this is like the highlight of this car. You must get this suspension if you get a Lexus LS. The back seat thing, I mean, that's a $23,000, $21,000 option. If you can swing it, obviously do it. The stereo, eh, not too sold on it. I, I don't feel any bass. I just, I hear, and I, there's just no sensation. I'm not feeling the, the music. I'm not feeling it at all. No matter how hard I've been trying, can't do it. Let's continue. So I'm cruising at like 90, 93, and I got this Jetta there just on my ass. And so I'm going to put it in Sport Plus and try and get away from this guy. I don't know who he is or why he's so close. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Obviously, he can't keep up. He's in a Jetta. But uh, it's good to know you can get away from freaks that like to cling on. Yeah, see, I, I don't know. I, I don't like people that tailgate me at 90 on the freaking freeway, uh, whether or not people are around. I don't know. It just seems like people look at cars that, that, uh, maybe be a good insurance payout for them. I'm not sure, but I keep my eye on that kind of stuff on the road, especially when I'm traveling alone. A little safety tip for you there. And of course, this happens a lot because these trucks are limited to 70 miles an hour and we're in a 75 mile an hour speed limit area. So, you know, of course he's right behind me again. He's, why, why do you have to get so close? I just don't understand. So once we can get around this truck, we'll just leave this again. I can see his headlights now. Well, at least he's not as close as he was. It's crazy. I don't even like being this close. Yeah, we'll eventually make it around. It's uphill. Fuel economy is down to 23.4. And, you know, I'm not really concerned about fuel economy. It's, this is not what this car is about. It's really about exploiting electricity for uses in cities. That's the thing too, you can see there's really little passing power here because of that CBT. So it doesn't really react like you'd expect in a luxury sedan at this price point because there's no V8 doing like a real major kick down and thrusting the vehicle forward. You're sort of at the mercy of the CBT. And I had the same kind of problem in the LC 500 H, although that two door coupe was lighter, this is obviously slower, so it doesn't feel as much as. Oh, there you go. Get off the freeway, Jetta. This doesn't feel like a, like an S Class would, you know, or a, I've never driven a Tesla because they don't have any Teslas for the press fleet. But what I'm saying is, this doesn't feel like a, like a high speed version of a car to to uh, to last across the country or the or the te or the state of Texas with it seems like a more sensible way if you're commuting all the time for work or you have offices between huge cities you're an attorney I don't know but you want to get 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 from place to place and not waste all your time and money on fuel uh, but you still have a nice luxury car that that can compete with an S class or a 7 series but you're not really you're not really going to get there before they will will you they're always going to beat you there in this car, you're not going to make it faster than they will. But passing, to me, like passing these big trucks, 
Uh, if there are three or four of them in a row, you want to get around them, especially on Interstate 81 in Virginia when you're going through Shenandoah. You know what I'm talking about. Doing this kind of driving really requires a lot of passing power, and this car lacks in that department. It moves, but it, it doesn't... That was Sport Plus, so it, it what I did was floor it, and it, it didn't really blow me away. Not impressed by that. Maybe maybe they can do something about that. I would say up the power on that electric motor, and, and their hybrid system is obviously not uh, gain, gaining... Uh, beneficial like performance aspect like uh, the manufacturers that are coming out might be able to do instead also I put it in comfort mode there is no air suspension setting in here it's just whatever that setting is I think it's tied in with with the mode of the vehicle but if you customize your drive mode you can't change that suspension setting either so even though it has an air suspension and it raises and lowers and it absorbs all the nuances of the road you're not you're not able to change it like right now to like a firm ride or a soft ride so i have it in comfort and we're just cruising straight through here and um, a side note here is that there down there is a trunk button so i said when in the beginning of the video you can't open or close it from the car i think that's it right there and then we have the uh, camera here. If I hit the camera, nothing happens. But there is a camera button to turn it on. That should be over here, but it isn't. Plus, I've got that lane keeping off, and we're going freaking arrow straight here on this interstate. So you don't need the lane keeping at all, but you do need to have it on when you're in stop and go traffic if you want the car to steer or follow the car in front when you're going in city traffic which we don't need right now and we won't use until we get into Houston and have to battle with the traffic that's going to be there which will be freaking rush hour when I arrive oh joy I, uh, I couldn't stand it anymore I turned heads up display off the reason for that is because when it's on the uh, the way I see the speed area and the tachometer thing or the power or whatever is it gets cut off. I see that. And it, it really annoys me that it, it seems like it's too far to the right. And it's not really centered. Nothing about it uh, I like. I, You know, it might be 24 inches over the hood. But it's not 24 inches from the cowling. So I don't know why they're, why they're calling it a 24 inch heads up display. It's not a full display. It's, it's not really doing much as a HUD. So I'm going to hit the button, shut it off and then live life without it, which is okay because it's an option and I'm not really not really utilizing it anyway. Oh, that's cool. The big turbine blade. Power 128 miles, two hours and two minutes to go, 23 MPG average. We're in normal mode, just cruising along. Normal mode feels really good on the highway. Comfort mode uh, weirdly, if you look, I noticed. Boom, comfort. Uh, weird. I, it had a tachometer earlier when I was in comfort mode. I don't know why. Let's go sport, comfort. Yeah, look at that. I go from sport to comfort, and there's a tachometer. Whereas I go back into sport, there's a tachometer. If I go into normal, there's no tach. And if I go to comfort, there's no tach. I go up to normal. No, I go up to sport, there's a tach down to comfort, there's a tack. I don't know if that's intended or a software glitch. I'm going to go push in for normal, and then we'll stick with that. Weird. So I could theoretically take my time on this trip and enjoy this car, but I might as well just be with these people who have nicer cars and drive at a faster pace, and I'm still enjoying the countryside, uh, there's no doubt in that. But there's, there's no point in, in hanging around with the losers in the slow lane. So what I'm going to do is, is uh, just pace this Volvo XC90. 65 deaths this year and the streak of Texas. Yeah, good. That's not distracting at all. Anyway, 
we're at a good clip here. We're driving just nicely at 90-ish miles an hour. Fuel economy is down to 22.8. And my average speed is 74. But we're just cruising. And this is not a bad way to cruise, hey? I'm sure if you were given one of these for a week, uh, you'd do the same thing. You'd go as far as you can and enjoy as much as you can and share it as much as you can. So thanks for watching. And, uh, yeah. I wish I could use that back seat there and have someone else drive, but you know the rules. Uh, how far are we? We are 102 miles to go. About an hour and 40 minutes to the hotel. And I'll show you something really cool when I get to the hotel. You're going to like it. I know this probably looks like just a mishmash of random thoughts. We're getting closer to Houston. The landscaping has definitely changed, improved, depending on who you are and where you like, which parts of Texas you prefer. Uh, bam, right there. Navigation said, hey, there's some predicted traffic ahead. Would you like to reroute? And I said, yes. So we are now rerouting. I'm going to move over here. I'm going to move back. And part of that rerouting includes whatever it tells us to do. So, 83 miles to go, hour and a half, basically. And I'm going to pass by this rest area, because I don't need it. We're going to pass this truck. The little Nissan shit box up there has been happily tooting along in the left lane like a clog of the drain. So we're going to pass him. And head over to Hotel Zaza on our way. Well, here we are. Uh, pretty big traffic. And there's an exit, which I'm not going to take, which my gut is telling me is a trap. And so I'm going to stick here. I'm going to turn on the cruise. Weird thing is, I didn't know radar cruise was already on, so I hit it and I actually turned it off. And then I hit set. And I didn't know what was off, so then I had to hit the brakes because, well, it wasn't slowing down for the stop-and-go traffic that was ahead. So here I am, completely stopped, and now I'm going to see if I can hit set. Yep, and it sets and defaults to 19 miles an hour, which is good to know. Because some cars, they won't turn on unless you're going like 20 or 30 miles an hour. So I'm in the habit of setting up before I hit the stop-and-go traffic. So here we are in uh, just nonsense. And let's see if I set it to any speed, it'll be fine. All right, well, this is the traffic it wanted me to avoid, but it didn't want me to avoid. And that's where I should have gotten off, but I didn't, and everyone else is. Perfect timing, huh? I guess maybe I should use this map a little more efficiently. Like zoom in a little bit. Yeah. You can get off, you can get on, you can get off, you can get on. Not a big deal. So, the car is doing the work, not as far as lane keeping, I can hit that button though, there we go. Now it's going to follow that Ford F1 F Super Duty in front of me. Yep. Good times, good times. It's actually moving over when that thing moves over accelerating now because he's out of the way. I guess I'll just have to move over then. Yep. Cool. Well, that was odd. Nice, interesting spot to pull over. It's just in the middle of nowhere there. Alright. Crisis averted. We're moving again. Uh, back in the traffic, I got nowhere to go, but, uh, let's see, 56 miles left on the, on the destination, so we are averaging 22.3 MPGs, and, uh, 75 miles an hour, uh, 61 degrees outside, uh, let's see, energy monitor doesn't tell me, and that's useless, what else do we got? 38, 37, 40, 41. So the tire pre pressures went up with the heat. I'll show you the tires after I get out. And yeah, that's what we got. Not bad. And yeah, I think I'll resume with the drive here.
when it's cleared to move over. There we go. Cool. I'm sitting here with the uh, massage on, and it feels so good right now. I am so much more relaxed than when I started. So it shows that this car does have an ability to kind of just calm you down and keep you enjoying your trip, no matter what is in front of you. And I'm I'm really digging the uh, the massage function. It's a really nice massage. It's it's up there with the best of them. I wouldn't say any are better than others because I think it all comes down to how you're feeling at that moment and is it working? I mean, because I think you can have a massage that just doesn't feel good or a massage that really just blows your mind. So right now, I'm pretty impressed that a machine is actually doing something really cool and it feels really good. And if you go to the mode here, uh, you'll see not just the driver's seat, but driver's seat refresh, centrifugal, centrifugal, centrifuge, all, centrifugal. Uh, basically, it means out, inward out, and it's it's working, and feels good. That's a highly recommended mode right there. We have, according to the map, 33 miles to go, and we'll get there. I don't want to say anything about anything to curse myself or not curse myself, so we'll just keep this as it is. Alright, there's the traffic ahead. I'm going to hit resume, and it's going to take over driving in this stop-and-go traffic. There we are. It's slowing down. Not the Mercedes behind me, though. Holy shit. So, um... What else can I say? We're on, uh, distance three. I'll put it down to distance one. And I've also lowered the, uh, the sunshades in the back, and I've opened this. There was a little bit of wind noise from the sunroof, which is a little weird, but it's the only thing I can hear, uh, in the car. <laughs> so... With all the shades down and everything, it feels very airy and bright. And there isn't much of a blind spot uh, back there at all. So, good to know. And when you're done with your road trip and you get to a city and you activate Radar Cruise, you're you're sort of immune from the change in driving style because the machine is taking it over. And you sort of, whether you are tired or worn out or fatigued or exhausted, whatever the term is that you want to use, the car isn't, and the car will do just fine, as long as people don't cut you off and go slower than everybody that was in front of you, so that's how it handles traffic there, let's see how, what kind of a gap this idiot left in front of us, yeah, I'm not sure about Houston. Not my thing. But I'm here for the show. I'm here to show you what the show is about. So we'll do that. And the chick behind me is insane. Waving her arms and like getting real close to me. And I'm not even doing the driving. So. Maybe she's on the phone. That's what it is. All right, I think this is more or less Houston proper because now we're hitting the dreaded traffic, the red line on the map, which, as we all know, is snooze time, autonomous car time, something like that. So I got this going. I got the radar on. It's going to start following the car in front. There it is. It's doing it right now. You can see, hopefully, if I can hold this still enough weird thing is, like, I can't get the steering wheel and that car in front at the same time. The angle, and then the focus, it's just all wrong. But I think you get the point. We're here. We're stuck in traffic. And, uh, 31 minutes? I don't know about that, but 23 miles to go to our destination. And what else can I tell you? Uh, the ride was great. Seats are good. Yeah. You know, it's it's pretty impressive. As far as the luxury sedans go, it is a luxury sedan. It qualifies for that, especially back there. And 
you know, the climate system has been great. It uh, has auto recirc, so when there's uh, debris in the air and stuff, it'll automatically switch to, to recycle mode. And, you know, when you're in stop and go now, this is the important part. This is the hybrid part. So you see the little EV icon there, and we can have the EV mode. But I don't think EV works below or above 26 miles an hour, something like that. Steering assist unavailable, hold the steering wheel. Okay. So this is the high, this is the beauty of it. Like you can travel from one city to another, and then when you're in traffic, you're not burning fuel in this kind of situation. You're running on electric, which hopefully it's charged. But I can't tell you what the charge is because I don't know. What do I do? Do I go to menu and then go to info? Is info going to show me the car? Yeah. There we go. So now. And by the way, I'm a total novice to all this stuff. I've driven two Priuses before, but, you know, this is what it's like. I'm trying to do this so I don't have to RTFM, which stands for read the frickin' manual. And I'm supposed to be able to just get in it just like you can on a test drive or whatever and be like, hey, this is what we're going to do. So trip information, you can see 171 miles, 2 hours, 73 mile an hour average. Uh, I regenerated... How many kilowatt hours? I don't quite understand any of that. I generated, f oh, 50 watt hours. Okay, duh. Kilowatt hours didn't sound right at all. And we can go here to traffic incidents. Stuff that, traffic events on current routes. Yeah, it's looking pretty bad. But it is uh, five to five, basically. So it's expected. Well, it's a little too late for that, don't you think? Traffic information has been updated. Would you like to reroute to avoid predicted congestion? Well, I tried it last time and you failed me. So let me see. Let them I go to view map, even though I have no idea where I am. Oh, yeah. I'll accept that alternative route. Hopefully it's not too late. Okay. I guess I'll just keep going straight. It's still following the car in front. You can see it's steering on its own. The funny thing is, uh, all I have to do is touch the steering wheel. It's kind of weird because uh, the steering wheel's got wood on it, and I find myself holding it and going like this the whole time. Kind of natural, right? <laughs> These freaking Lexus people. I have a thought here, you know, uh, in this radar cruise situation, if I am moving, if I blah, if I move over a lane and I put my foot on the accelerator, it loses the radar cruise ability. Most cars, you can hit the gas, pass, take your foot off, and it resumes the radar aspect to it. But not in the Lexus. You got to hit resume again, which is odd. So like right now, I'm accelerating, and I take my foot off, and yeah, it's still doing it. I guess I have to floor it, I guess, which I've done once before. And I didn't expect that. I expected it to just resume like all other cars do, but this one didn't. I don't know how I can duplicate this again. Let's see. Uh, I guess I didn't know. Let's see what I can do. I can... That's beeping at me. It's got the same beep, too for all the warnings, so I, I'm listening, and by the time I look down at the screen, I don't know what I saw, because my, my I'm not staring at the screen, I'm staring at the road, so I hear beep beep, and I look, I'm like, well, what was it? What was it? Did it beep to tell me I'm out of the lane? We will never know. Uh, let's see, how can I demonstrate this? My foot's on the gas now. If I take it off, see all the icons are green, but we're still moving. Hmm. Off to find another way. Old steering wheel. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. There's, there's not enough room right now to demonstrate. I need like an open lane, and there isn't an open lane. Give me a second. I think we got one. Nope. Nope. Dang, this is frustrating. 
Well, you're going to have to trust me on that. And what else can I say? Uh... Da, 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 da. Hmm, I could get off the freeway and get back on. That might show. Here, I'll cut over one lane to the left in a minute when there's enough room. Okay, ready? Floored. Okay. And so now I take my foot off and you'll notice well, now it's doing it. Obviously, if you tap the brake, it goes away. Cruise is on. I see the green light. I don't know what speed I'm set to. That, that That's just like the, the most confusing part of this car is that when you've got that cruise going, I couldn't tell you what we're set at. And where it's supposed to be. Let's say if I turn on HUD. HUD doesn't say anything either. 82 miles an hour. There you go. So, I don't see it here. Okay, I guess I have to go to the radar cruise one. Okay. Well, that see again, like, information overload, but not enough information at the same time. That's the problem I'm having with this car, is I'm not seeing enough information when I need it. Oh, I guess that's a false alarm, then. We'll carry on here. Oh my... I can... I-45 South. Yeah, I am on I-45 South. You got it. I'll keep going where I'm going. There is Houston. Uh, downtown Skyline. There it is. Right there. Boom. So, some people say they like it better than most other... Uh, get around the truck so you can see it. Uh, better than other uh, city skylines. And I think it's okay. It depends on which angle you're coming at it from. And I still like the Dallas skyline. The Austin skyline's catching up. But the Houston one, yeah, it's different. It's hard to see, too, though. I mean, it's so, like, distant. It looks close, but... It's like Los Angeles. That's what I'm trying to get at. It's down. It's out there, and, and we're like struggling to get to it. But it looks, it looks like a crowded place, which is a good thing for a city. Of course, you'll see this skyline and a lot of cell phone commercials and insurance commercials and all sorts of other stuff. Let's take a photo of that. Yeah. I don't know why I took a photo, but I did. So we got uh, seven miles to go. I have to sneeze. <coughs> wow. Anyway, there we go. Nice skyline. Almost, almost golden hour. It looks really cool. I gotta check into the hotel, and then I gotta change. And then I'm going to go to the reveal of three vehicles at the uh, Houston Auto Show, which you already know about. And, yeah. So, we made it, and it didn't take very long. If I go to the trip computer, 22.9 average, 70 mile an hour average, so we definitely slowed down in this traffic. Two miles ahead on the route. Stop and go traffic. Of course. So we got radar crew set to 84, and... Continue on I-45 South, and then I-45 South is on the right. On the right. So continuing uh, that path right there will help us. It's actually not bad right now. I think I've driven through Katy when I came through Austin, and the, the traffic from Austin was on the Katy side, which was like 12 lanes across. This this seems to be a little bit more civil. Maybe it's the older part of town, so the everyone moved over to the urban sprawl side of Katy. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, so we gotta move over to the right? No, we stay on the left. 
So this says I-45 Putman Street downtown. Oh, I missed it. Oh, no, no. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. I-45 South is on the right. And then I-45 South is on the right. I move over one more. And one more again. If I have to pull this thing over... Get that stupid yellow truck out of the shot. There we go. Nice! <clears throat> Boom. That is a pretty good downtown shot. I don't like that skyline. Alright, now I'm going to have to concentrate here. It wants me to go to... Exit. Well... In nine-tenths of a mile, I-45 South is on the right. Oh, I see. Well, I can't exactly take that. Oh, we're going to have to do something nasty. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. That was not that bad. Pretty. I'm just going to keep the camera rolling here because it's a pretty good looking shot. I-45 South is on the right. Gotcha. On the right, on the right, on the right. Let's see, I see. So I need to... Take the three lanes on the right, which those signs say otherwise. Aquarium, okay, that's pretty cool. Wow. And it's 59 degrees out, so I think it's a little warmer than it was when I left Dallas. Of course, we're at the uh, coastline, so the Gulf Coast is not going to be cold. It's kind of the thing about when you travel north-south that you get, like, climate change. We're going for it. All right. What else we got? East-West, that would be time change, because all the time zones change. Well, that's the rest of what downtown we'll be looking at. Hmm. You know, I've, I've only been into downtown Houston once, and I'm sure, I'm sure it's a lot of fun. Let's try it out one day. In two miles, TX288 South. Is on the right. Hmm. It might also be faster just to get off and take the streets. We only have 4.1 miles to go. But I'll stick with this. We got that in front of us. And we got all that behind us. Wow. So close. Yet so far away. But again, I uh, want to reiterate the... Oh, that's cool. Kind of like an urban garden oasis. <sighs> um, the... Uh, what are these? Uh, I guess they're just nurseries. And then there's some, like, tracks here. Yeah, we're heading near uh, Rice University. The cloud layer is awesome, too. The use of the hybrid here really helps. It goes into EV mode, and it's just very, you know, it's very relaxing. It's very coaxing, like, oh, I got this kind of thing. That's what it feels like, rather than having a V8. a mile, right turn onto Herman Drive. Rather than having a V8 constantly burn fuel, uh, you've got this sort of, like, aid, like an assistant. 
And it's not to save fuel or money, it's just to, like, keep you calm. That's what it feels like. All right, we're near the hotel. Let me get in the right lane. The mirrors here are really far out. This car is just so wide. Make a right soon. Yep, I'll catch you when I pull into the uh, parking lot of the hotel. I just figured it out. There's a separate EV mode light. There's EV and then EV mode. So I press the EV mode button and now it's EV mode. And then it turns off. I guess because we go over a certain amount of speed or I put the foot down too heavy. Uh, I'm, I think I'm right in the fact that there's just not enough power to the... Uh... Right turn ahead and then the first exit of that's, the traffic circle. That's the hotel right there. I'm going to make a right here. Let's do that. Dun, 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 dun. All right. You have arrived at your destination. The route guidance All right. is now. And see the steep driveway? If I wanted to, I can hit up and it will raise the suspension. It does it quite quickly, although I can't really quantify that. And then one thing I want to do is also, because there's a bunch of uh, hopeless valet guys there. I'm going to put this into setup, I think it's called. If I can go to setup, and then I can go to vehicle, and then valet mode. Let's do, uh, let's do a code here. I'll do a code without you looking. Don't, don't want you calling the hotel and tell them what I use. Okay, so now we're in valet mode. And I don't know what that does, <clears throat> but it's there. And, aha, there's more. So because I hit that camera button, now it turns the camera on when we get there. So, all right, I'm going to head out. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. That was the Lexus LS500H. See, he already wants to open the door for me. I don't even know where the lock button is in here. Let's see. Well, all right, I'll figure it out. That's kind of funky. <clears throat> what kind of hotel is this? There's a shower in the middle of the room. I should get my bag. Hmm. Okay, so you walk in, and there's a shower literally right here. And there's the front door. <laughs> well, I'm, I've got nothing to hide. That's kind of cool. So, shower. TV. So you can watch TV from your shower. And you can watch people on your bed from your shower. Of course, you've got your... Uh... Wow. <clears throat> oh, damn it. The day I don't bring my cigars is the day... Well, they're actually, the pool is going to be filled Friday. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Oh, well. The day I don't bring my cigars is the day I get the patio. Well, thanks for watching. I'm going to have fun with that. And that was the Lexus LC LS, the Lexus LS 500H. And uh, it's worth 120 grand, I'll tell you that. Is it... Is it an S-Class? No. Is it a 7 Series? No. But it's just the Japanese interpretation of what a luxury car should be. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Well, you find me on the freeway leaving Houston now on another day, and it is raining. The traction in this vehicle is amazing. The Lexus LS 500h puts the power down just fine. And it cuts through the rain just like it cuts through the wind. I don't even know that the ground is wet. It doesn't feel wet at all. It just feels like normal pavement, which is great to have in a big sedan. Just, it adds to that confidence and that safety level. Even though I'm not too close to anybody in front of me, 
you kind of get the feeling that, well, there's no traction issue here. The one thing I do want to say is, and I forgot to mention this on the road trip, was the the range, 104 miles, doesn't show up in any of the other drive modes. So I've got navigation set, and I know I need to get fuel at some point, but it just doesn't show up as needing to get fuel, you know, halfway through the journey. And even if you look at the navigation route here, it doesn't say my range is 104 miles. It doesn't say anything. All I see is a fuel gauge in the bottom right there that is going to be consequential fairly soon. So I just want to point those few things out. I do love the semi aniline leather in here. It smells great, it feels great, and even in this rain, you know, semi aniline leather will show that the leather's wet and will kind of like absorb that moisture. So you got to need to be careful with that and make sure you wipe it down a little bit. Obviously, you don't want to leave your windows down in the rain on any car, but here you'll see a wet spot and it, it will evaporate after a while. I think it's here on the seat somewhere, but all is good now. So I'm just heading back towards Dallas and. Yeah, traction control is in normal mode, and this thing just moves along just fine. Fuel economy-wise, I I expected it to be a little bit more fuel efficient, but you know I gave up on that. Oh, uh, we'll see. We'll see if I can, you know, with the slower speeds in the rain, if I can uh, improve on it on the way back. But we'll we'll see. I don't know if I want to make this video four hours long, but you know I always can, and I appreciate everyone who watches. I forty five north. As you are well aware, I did get a great night's sleep in that hotel room, as wacky as it was. So I'm on my way back from the Houston Auto Show. And if you haven't checked out those videos yet, they are going to be on my channel. So it occurred to me, I'd like to put this on my Best Cars I've Driven playlist. But it has a few issues with the way it lays out all the information. It's a great car for a road trip, but it isn't ideal when you need to actually plan your trip while you're driving. For instance, I have to go to the screen to see range, and that means I can't have the screen with the information on it, and I don't like the heads-up display when it's on, which is that information there. And that doesn't really show me anything I need. I don't need the compass. I don't need you to tell me radar is ready. I want to know, like, more telematics than that. So I turn it off. And in the navigation, let's just say I'm like, oh, I've already got a destination in mind. I want to add a point of interest. I need to go to the nearest gas station along the route, which is possible in a lot of vehicles. Mercedes does it, and uh, FCA, so my Dodge does it. You can go to point of interest here and, and choose a gas station. However... In here, you'll notice it's grayed out. I can't, I can't see a point of interest while I'm driving, and there's no point in pulling off to the motorway to to get a gas station along the route. I have no way of of finding a gas station, which is odd. So you figure, oh, I'll do voice command, and I've tried the voice command, and I ended up with Lexus Assist, and I canceled out of that. That's where it goes to a uh, an operator and the operator finds something for you. I don't like that at all. 